Jared, what are you doing? Well, I'm rolling up cables right now. Why? We've got a show to do. Yeah, but we're doing grunge, right? Yeah. Okay, so unplugged. I figure it worked for MTV. Oh, unplugged. That's what we used to do. Right. We used to come in the studio early and unplug things so that it would mess the show up. That's right. Yeah. 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 But we've grown since then. We have. And now we're stars. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, I guess I'll plug this back in and we'll start the show. Even though we look kind of grungy, we do already kind of fit in with our look. We don't have to change. I'm too sexy for my grunge. That's not grunge. That's not grunge. But I changed the words to grunge. Oh, the, it didn't work for MTV. It didn't work, yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's start the show. Tonight on the show, Dominic, Gabriella, and Jared Poole. And now, please welcome, he's your friend and mine, your host, Jared Isaacs. Hi there, hey there, hello and welcome to the Audio Roast. It's me, Jared Isaacs, your host. Thank you so much for stopping by. Checking us out and spending a little bit of your time here with us tonight as we talk grunge from 1992. We've got a good one for you on this one. We've got Jared Poole from Envoy, and we've got Dominique Gabriella from On The Scene. So, it's good stuff. But we're not going to get started until everybody watching clicks right down here at that subscribe button. When you're there, be sure to hit the notification bell. Select all notifications so that anytime we do anything, you're along for the ride. Uh, comment throughout the show. We'll be sure to check up on it, and uh, we actually reply to everybody. So it's a, it's a fun way to stay interactive. And then finally, share it to your social media pages and help us get our faces in front of your friends. Uh, if you're a fan of podcasts, you can get all of this in your headphones. Just go wherever you find your podcast and search for The Audio Roast, and you'll find us there. You can also check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash audio roast. There you can find all kinds of extra footage, bonus scenes, behind the scenes, under the scenes, between the scenes, all the scenes, uh, and also fun extra games, artist spotlights. Josh, what all we got over there? I mean, I think you've covered it. You've covered oh, all, yeah. all right. Recipes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Uh, we've also got playlists available. These are playlists that we put together from past episodes. Uh, so if there's been a topic that we've covered and you're into that kind of music, check out that playlist. It's that simple. You can also check out our website at audioroast.com. It's your official one-stop shop for all things Audio Roast related, be it merch, uh, seven songs in seven days. You could listen to all the videos and, and check out how and why I ranked what I ranked. Uh, you can also check out sponsor links. Uh, we might have a new uh, something, something over there to check out this week. Uh, anything else, Josh? Merch. Oh, merch. Yeah, merch. yeah, that's what we've got. We've got some merch. You know, you need some new threads. Yours getting a little grungy. Yeah, in honor of grunge, you might want to pick up a hootie t-shirt. Hootie hoo! Hootie hoo! Uh, good stuff. If you know, you know. If you don't, go back and watch. There's great stories there. So uh, that's what you can do to help us. Now it's time for us to include you in what we're doing with everybody's favorite part of the show. Seven songs in seven days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see you. Uh, this is, uh, smells like a weird week to me. Josh, what do you think? How are you feeling about this week? I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, so there's two, uh, spoiler alert, there's two songs that we have heard, uh, before, but I've always said it's not about just the song. Well, a lot of times it kind of is. It's also about what you're up against. So it's, it's kind of exciting to have some songs that we've heard before, but see how it, you know, how the deck shuffles and reshuffles with other songs that, Anyway, I'm babbling. Number seven spot from Christy Presswell. This is the second time we've heard this song. Back from the Dead by Hailstorm. Sorry, Christy, I didn't like it any better the second time than I did the first time. 
Um, I love that opening scream that she does in the song. I'm all in on that. But she never gets away from that and gets like nice and soft and the, there's just no dynamics. It's just yell, 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 scream, 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 girls, yeah. In the number six spot, uh, speaking of girls and screaming, uh, but for different reasons, this is from Jared Waisner. Uh, this is Flesh and Blood by a little band called Poison. Yeah, that's right. Poison just beat out Hailstorm. You heard it here first. Uh, it, it's the least sounding poison song I've ever least sounding least poison sounding poison song I've ever heard until the chorus and then it's straight up exactly another poison song uh, in the number five spot from Casey Lee we've got starting over by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis uh, so this one yeah, I, I hear what you're saying with the lyrics I, I agree that they're very deep uh, very moving not anything that moved me per se, but I do appreciate it. I actually really enjoyed the chorus until those fake drums kicked in and then I tapped out. Uh, I mean, I've got a Casio keyboard that I've had for 20 years. I think I've got a drum sound on there that's probably a little bit better. Uh, in the number four spot, I just threw it away. What do we got, Josh? Smoking in the Rockies by Sawyer Brown, given to us by Chris Hankins. Uh, I'm a big Sawyer Brown fan, as a matter of fact. Many people don't know that about me, but uh, I grew up listening to a lot of 90s country. So, uh, really good stuff, but I will say not one of their best. Uh, it's, it's a fun play on words. It's a, it's a cute saying you might see in a Hallmark card, smoking in the Rockies, uh, and the Rockies are smoking or something like that, but that's really... Rocking in the Smokies. Yeah, that's the whole guts of the song. <laughs> eh. Middle of the road to me, so that's number four spot. Number three spot we've got from Abigail Burbridge, All My Favorite People by Marin Morris. I hope I said that right. If not, eh. uh, So I actually kind of started to enjoy this song. And then at the exact same time, it hit me and it hit Josh. Working nine to five. What a way to make a living. Barely getting by. It's all the same song to me. It's literally the same melody. If you've not heard 9 to 5, or if you haven't heard it lately, listen to it, and then listen to that, and you'll be like, oh, that's a, I mean, a direct Blade steal. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I didn't hate it. Okay, so but a blatant ripoff is higher than Hailstorm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's how you anything. <laughs> all right, uh, number two spot. Put all your hate comments right there. That's all right. Bring it on. Come on. I'm ready for you, Internet. Been waiting for you this whole time. Number two spot, uh, again, we've heard this one, so this is our second time hearing this, and I did like it just as much as I did the first time. We've got from Cameron Couch, Ruler of Everything, by Tally Hall. Tally Hall! Uh, Tally Hall. Tally Hall. Uh, good stuff. Really freaking weird video, though, so if you're into that kind of thing, check it out. Uh, and in the number one spot, in honor of Grunge Week, we've got from Robin Phillips. Everything I Hate About You by Ugly Kid Joe. All right. I mean, I will say this, too, on this song. When I was younger, I always thought that it was a guy and a girl singing. Uh, it wasn't until years later I was like, oh, it's all the same guy. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. Uh, now is your turn. Yeah, yeah. To use the hashtag seven. Submit any song right down here in the comments. Any genre, any style, or any decade, just make, make it a song. song. We'll take the next seven days, give it a listen, give it a rank, and then give you a bunch of crap about it. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back right after this. Hey, Springfield, Robert and Cheryl Crook here. And together we are Zen Lens Photo Media. You've probably seen us around town, but did you know we also do family and children photography? Don't forget maternity and infant sessions as well as senior portraits and weddings. Please keep us in mind when you need event coverage and videography. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at www.zenlandsphotomedia.com. Or you can give us a call at 417-818-7067 and book your session today. I have just one question. Have you thought about being a guest on the show? We are currently seeking music lovers of all kinds to join in on our fun. If you're interested in being a guest, or if you just have questions, comments, or suggestions, you can message us on Facebook or email us 
at the audio rose podcast at gmail.com. You can also submit any topics you'd like to hear discussed. What's up, all you Gen Xers and What's Nexters? We are going to find out what's in our mug this week. All right. That's what we've got in our mug right over there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, Josh, you with us? I am. How about I pop up here there you go there we go <laughs> you know all that stuff yeah uh living after midnight from classic what about Rock it Coffee. sounds like what we've got in our mugs so that's what's what we got in our mugs in living after midnight what is in it uh it is an amped medium dark roast that is almost against the law Ooh, one might or say breaking, breaking the law it. yeah mm. breaking the law then there's honey rich herb and we got another thing coming a tobacco finish. Ooh, a tobacco mm. finish. Uh, so, yeah, you might even say that uh, if you drink enough, you might become a turbo lover. Oh, yeah. If you drink too much, you might become a painkiller. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. And if you don't drink any at all, you might be the Green Manalishi. Is that one of their songs? I, yeah. I, okay, well, <laughs> sorry. Not familiar with Green Manalishi. Gosh, Josh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what's in our mug. Now then, uh, Josh, how's your week been? It has been swell. Swell, eh? Swell, that's yeah. A, that's a term from the ages of old. No, no, I'm just swelling. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what's got you all excited? No, well, it's mostly joints. Uh, it's, it's as I'm getting... <laughs> Not bones, joints. <laughs> hey there, I see what you're doing, I'm mate. I don't it know in, if I approve I'm or not. Filling it in my joints. There you yeah. go. Uh, yeah, so... Did I throw you with that one? <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you didn't see that in the script, did you? I did not well. see that one in the script. I just <laughs> popped it out there, if you will. <laughs> you had another thing coming. All right. Uh, let's... Check out what's in our mailbag this week, shall we? All right, we've got exactly one piece of mail, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, are you ready for it, Josh? Yep. I'll tell you, this is actually our very first official mail since it came into Questions at AudioRoast.com. Yeah. Did it go into the questions? Yeah, can... Nice. What? It went into the questions? Went into the questions. Awesome. And now it's going to get answered. Well, Here we go. Are you ready? Uh, I, I'm it's all a, Twitter with anticipation. It, it's a two-parter. I'm swelling. It's a twofer. It's a, I'm swelling, swelling right now with anticipation. anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Today is sponsored That could be by my blood word. pressure Swole? somewhere. <laughs> Do what? I said that could be my blood pressure. Somewhere. It could be. Yeah. Somewhere. Hopefully we yeah. don't have a medical emergency before we Oh, it's an emergency. <laughs> I'm not touching that with uh, uh <laughs> You better not. Well, okay. <laughs> anyway. Um here we go. Okay. And this is this is a great question. I bet a lot of people have this question, but have been too nervous to ask. What is butt rock? What is butt rock? And and why is it named butt rock? That one sent to us from mm. Julia Drake Cobb. Well, inquiring minds want to know, I suppose. Okay. Well, you know, I'll tell you. Well, first of all, okay. I had never heard the term butt rock until I had heard it from you. So oh, really? I don't know how legitimate. Oh no! This it's... genre. Is. Mm -hmm. It's legit. And I'm I mean, not real sure how to use air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, so, funny story. I'm just like you, Josh. I hadn't heard it until I heard somebody else say it. And that somebody else was a 
roommate of mine at the time. Okay. And so like an aficionado aficionado of music. Hey, easy yeah. there. Your tongue's right, starting to swell. Right. <laughs> so so he's like, you're saying you have a roommate. Yeah, your, your roommate is like no, roommate. Your, your roommate. I can't okay. wait to see somebody try to close caption this. Uh, yeah. All right. Try uh, it, you yeah, two. No. We dare so, you. And my roommate said this about Motley Crue. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. So I've kind of taken it and tweaked it a little bit. But he's okay. on the right track. So I'm going to start with, well, I'll answer both in, in the same pass through, I think. Okay. What is butt rock? Well, butt rock, much like a butt, is something you probably don't necessarily go out looking for. But when you see one, you know it. Uh, it's not the okay. prettiest thing, but for some reason, you kind of like it. I don't know. There are some and guys sometimes that are ass men. So. You just don't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I guess so. So it's usually very uh, contrived, very formulaic. Right. Very radio uh and not so much like man great musicianship or you know right it's kind of like a butt it's just kind of like there every now and then and but most of the time hmm. so who would you say would be the epitome of butt rock mm -hmm. i would think maybe nickelback i i, I think that's kind of the yeah. <laughs> unfortunate go-to yeah. yeah um so and and you could have butt metal, perhaps butt maybe metal because okay. a lot of like so uh, so butt is like a, a adjective. It's an adjunct description of any type of genre. So can you have like butt rap? Uh, I'm sure. I know so there's a like lot butt of rap. Country, there's lots butt. of that. That's yeah. oh yeah. You just turn on a country station. Now you know what butt country is. Yeah. Uh, so got that one taken care of. Uh, butt metal would be maybe like a Avenged Sevenfold, Five Finger Death Punch. Okay. Bro stuff. So, you bro know, metal. Right. Bro yeah. metal. Butt metal. Same thing. Okay. Uh, butt rock. Uh, yeah. Nickelback. Mm -hmm. If you want to go 80s, in my in my opinion, Poison. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say that. You know, just, yeah, that's, to me, what butt rock is. So, okay. now, Josh, do you understand what butt rock is? Yes, but I still don't think it's an industry industry term. Well, we'll have to have our audio ro roast research department look that one up for us. Right. Well, yeah. that would be convenient, wouldn't it? That would be. Mm -hmm. Answer your own question. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> or maybe mm. not. No. Mm -mm. Exception. All right, that's going to do it for this week's mailbag. Don't forget, you too can submit some earth-shattering questions to us uh, for us to answer here on the show. Just submit them right here um, in the comments down below, or you can shoot us an email to questions at audioroast.com. You can also just, you know, Facebook Messenger. We're normal people. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for this week's mailbag. This is Butt Rap, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right. Josh. Yes. Grunge 92. Grunge 92. Talk to me. Where were you? What were you doing in 92? What music were you listening to? I was in college. Briefly. Yeah? Yeah. I, yeah, I graduated in 91, so I would have been in my first year of college. Yeah. All right. Music wise? What music you wise? I actually I was a music major at the time, so I was listening to a lot of classical. Oh really? So yeah. like uh Mozart. nothing top forty per se. Well, what was ever on this radio, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I mean but I was inundated by classical music and Italian arias and oh. all that crap. So fancy. Yeah. Mm hmm So were you afraid to get grungy? I, I did not appreciate grunge when it came out. I got to be honest with you, Josh. Exactly the same for me. And now I'm like, I'd kill to have something even close to that back. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It, it's so funny. Uh, yeah, because I was, I was like right at, I don't know, 8 to 12 years behind. Right. Uh, so when grunge was happening, I was listening to Motley Crue and ACDC and that kind of stuff. And then once uh, that 
once new metal came on, then that's when I hit grunge. Mm-hmm. And then once whatever we're on do now, then I was like, oh, okay, like new so metal. So you were and cutting then, edge. Yeah, I was. You were cutting uh, edge. Right. I was very dull edge. Yeah, dull edge, yeah. No, I, my problem with. I had a butt knife. You had a butt knife, yes. <laughs> Careful, don't Eat sit on that. Eat it like a piece of cake. No, my problem with uh, grunge was you had these incredible singers, incredible guitarists, and then all of a sudden. They started dropping their guitars to their knees, which is terrible technique, meaning you don't right. care about technique technique at that point. Right. And the singers were like mumble rappers of the day. Just marbly mouth. So yes. So going back to what we were talking about uh with with humor. Uh, mm-hmm. about the butt rock thing there was uh very much so a musical fad or fashion with mm-hmm. her, her, you know her, kind of swallowing her, your vowels her, and rolling her, your tongue in the back of your mouth while you're singing yeah. uh very compressed and it was like it worked for a couple of people and it was like right. cha-ching 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 and it was just overdone right uh there's vocalizations that are happening today in music that are the, it's same kind of like trendy you're doing right. weird stuff with your like it doesn't sound like the words should sound kind of thing yeah it's it's like the weird pronunciations at the end of words, like knowing, you know, that they add to those things. It's right. Like really, what do you think? So it was the same way in, yeah. in the grunge era. Yeah. Uh, so it's one of those things as it's happening, you're like, oh, this is awful. And then whatever happens next is even worse. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, can we go back to that? Right. Yeah. Uh, interesting, this musical journey that we're on, huh? Yeah. And now, now I appreciate it because I was so turned off by the attitude and the lack of technical ability i couldn't appreciate what technical ability and what they were trying to say i just kind of shut it out and see so, and for me it wasn't uh the audible side of things it was the visual it was right. they they stripped things down i mean they you know sure i'll wear what i wore yesterday or two mm-hmm. days ago and go on stage and it's fine it doesn't matter it's not what it's about man right uh but i came from you know the the kiss the van halen the wow big stuff right. in your face and i'm like well why would i go from that to this right um you know you don't it, want a guy that looks like he just cleaned your lawn to be performing in front of you you know right. and that's that's or cut down a tree you know two hours before and stumble on the stage it's, exactly exactly i've always felt if you can't pick a band member out and walking through the audience and that person i've has, got such a has got a strong philosophy problem. and opinion yep. about exactly mm-hmm. that you're exactly right you uh can't stand out from the audience if you look like you belong in the audience. right yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Now we've got all of our bases covered. Right. You ready to take a break and uh, bring out our guests and all these people over here? Calm down. We got a fun show. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's get started. You want to get, get the ball it rolling, rolling, man? Let's do it. All right. Let's get our big shiny ball rolling, shall we? We shall. All right. There you go. We're just gonna see sit you there. on the other side, dude. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Audio Roast. We're going to get the show rolling and bring out our first guest. No relation, I swear, but dude has the best name in the whole local music scene, in my opinion. Uh, go ahead and welcome it this time, Mr. Jared Poole. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh my gosh, so we finally meet in, in real life, IRL. I know, we've been uh, online friends for a while, except for that one. Off and on, yeah. but yeah, you know, yeah. Sounded like you needed a little online break, though. 
Yeah, I mean, everybody has to go through a break sometimes. Every relationship, you know, you kind of you kind of go through those little waxing and waning periods. And uh, we, we had our period, you know? Yeah. We're yeah, back well, and we're stronger than that's ever. That's right. That's right. This is uh, the, uh, what do they call that? The 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 golden years or the sun? I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Golden years, yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> sure. Um, so, okay, let's, let's back this train up. You and I were talking a little bit before we started doing all this fancy camera stuff. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you moved to Springfield about the same time as I did. Yeah, 2003. Okay, so two questions. Where did you move from, and how long have you been stalking me? So, uh, <laughs> since 2003, uh, okay. to answer the second one. <laughs> Perfect. And then uh, I moved here from Lebanon, Missouri. I, that's where I graduated from. And, okay. Uh, just a great place to kind of fail out of college and stick around. Sure. Yeah. But you moved to Lebanon from the Chicago area? Yeah, yeah. I, I moved to Lebanon from the Chicago area my freshman year of high school. Major culture shock. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you yeah. grew up like around Chicago and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So that's super major. Well, suburbs, difference. but yeah. 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 Man, you know, yeah. Like me saying I'm from, I'm from Chicago is like someone from like Newark, New Jersey saying they're from New York City. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so what made you move to Missouri? Uh, grandparents, okay. uh, they were, they were like ill and needed someone to help take care of them. So I moved down to kind of be you, a man. caretaker and finish high school. Nice. Very good. Um, did you play music and stuff up in the Chicago area or uh, when did you start that? Dude? Um, I started playing piano and keys all like when I was young, young, like six, seven. And then uh, I kind of got into like actually playing in bands when I was like 12. So that was, fun. wow. That's really young. And then I started learning guitar at about 13. Holy cow. Wow. What kind of music were you playing when you were that young? Uh, were you so doing just covers or were you writing things? It, it was, uh, so we had this group of like little misfit teenagers that were g- gathered in my buddy Damien, Damien's bird, like uh, his, uh, his bedroom. And um, it was like industrial metal. Like, really? We were really wow. into like stabbing westward and gravity kills. Oh, okay. Nails. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Nice. So did you have like good instruments and stuff or were they like no, the typical No, it was like first... a Casio keyboard. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I, like cheap so, Ibanez. Okay, let me back that up. Were you playing industrial metal because that's what you wanted to play or because that's what your instruments were capable of? I think that's what five kids from 12 to 14 could do. Right, yeah. yeah. No, that's an awesome start. That's really cool. Um, so what were some of your early influences in musically? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, growing up, I, I, I was like raised on classical music. Uh, my grandfather, parents uh helped raise me that and before they moved to lebanon they we actually uh, i grew up in their house in, sh- in the chicago area oh, okay so classical uh my grandmother was huge on gospel um and then like i, I would say like i was big into like boys to men and all for one all that stuff really and then magically one day i found grunge wow yeah interesting yeah uh so you obviously had the radio on in the 90s that's is yeah what I'm that's, that's kind yeah. of how that happens yeah um it, yeah allison chains was on in fact i think uh it was Soundgarden, uh, and it was uh, what, what's the song that's on that that one really rad uh, Skitchin game, uh, Rusty Cage. Okay. Yeah, just that that song like drove me into it. It had like drive. Yeah. And I don't know if it's like if it was just you know um, manhood starting to set in. Right. But you start feeling that. You start feeling that adrenaline yes, and that kick. Absolutely. You're like, yes, I need this. Yep. Yep. For me, uh, I had grown up on like old, you know, like uh, the Beatles and that kind of stuff, and yeah. some country and old R and B and stuff. And so whenever my mom remarried, my stepbrothers were like Van Halen, Motley Crue. And I'm like, okay, ACDC. Yeah. And then a buddy of mine in school was like, no, here's some Metallica. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of, and that was kind of my journey. So it's really cool to hear some of these similarities, but keys. I, so I don't know how I didn't realize that you played synth and keys Yeah. and, um, and like metal. <laughs> I was better then than I am now probably, but I still do some keys um, in the, in the, in the music that I write now, um, my band, we just went on hiatus, uh, Envoy, uh, we were actually, uh, coming up with a new album and it was it major like synth core. And we'll probably come back and revisit that. Uh, just, you know, life got crazy and we all went our yeah. separate ways for right now. Very cool. Are they all around this area? Or? Yeah. Um, some old faces like Lyndon Caldwell, uh, you, you may name people might recognize, uh, Josh Greider, who's been in a couple okay, of bands. Yeah. 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 Um, some really great musicians Very we were much writing so. some really great music. That's it's, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you have recorded music and stuff from you guys in the past and that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. we have some music that we came up with uh, last year. We are, we're working on an LP. We got about six songs that are unfinished that we'll, we'll probably come back and revisit nice. that pretty soon. So if people want to hear it, do they just check it out on YouTube or do you have like a Spotify? Yeah, or? we have Spotify, YouTube, um, just one single out there. And that actually is not a representation of what Lyndon and Josh brought. Um, the song that I have out there, I like, I went in and grolled that with a... Uh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Grolled that. What a great term. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I grolled it. Uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. So 
if you listen to gospel and that kind of stuff, how does that factor into what you're doing now? Or does it, is it like, oh, that's, I've closed the chapter on that. Like I, I'd say like on, uh, on the music side of things, not, not the real. It's, it's not that it has like a direct influence on what I do now, other than, uh, I mean, I guess I, if you look back at it, I, I like, I really pull from not like modern gospel, but if you go back to like Baroque and, and like Gregorian chants yeah. and you, you listen to some of the pentatonics and some of the ways that they structure yep. music. I feel it that. lends itself to metal very yes, easily. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yep. Like if you uh, if you go back and listen to uh, Tool, like laterals, Absolutely. and you listen to um, what is it, Parable and Parabola, you yep. can actually uh, overlay some Gregorian chants on top of that, like a Kyrie liaison, and it just yes. fits perfectly. Absolutely so. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I like a lot about or- orchestral music. Yeah, because same kind of thing, um, which is a, a nice separation from like blues based anything. Right. Uh, it, it's just a totally different thing. So it's it's refreshing. Um, what, uh, if you guys are getting back together, is that all it's on your, on your plate for the future? Or do you have other things that you'd like to try to do? Or? Well, right now that we're kind of in our hiatus, I'm focusing on just like some solo music. I, okay. I have a couple songs that I was working on. I'm actually going in next week, uh, to reach audio to, uh, to finish up a song I wrote called ghost. Nice. Um, it's going to be pretty Have you worked rad. with Kevin before? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Super the, good dude. He produced, uh, the uh, uh, dreaming for me. It was really good. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, I know it's going to sound great then. Uh, Absolutely. Literally one of my, not one of my favorite area, not even just local yeah. audio engineer is Kevin Gates. Yeah. Uh, just an insanely talented dude. Uh, super nice. Super easy to get along with. I've worked with producers that are really good, but they're. Kevin's. They're not fun to work with bomb.com man. yes absolutely yeah. so absolutely and then, uh, michael palmquist who was our producer for the other songs that we were doing okay yeah. nice very cool man very cool so how long have you guys been together as a band um well so the way envoy came to be um i was the guitarist for the band zeros if you're familiar okay with yeah, yeah 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 um and who all was in that band i'm trying uh, to think it was J- well james peralta is like is the zero okay like, he is zeros uh, then there was uh, Jason Dawson. Uh, we had a guy named Dustin Freeman doing drums for a little while. Dustin and I are still really good friends. Um, and then we had uh, Nathan Vest, and okay. Nathan was our bass player. Um, and I joined in because James wanted to focus more on doing straight vocals, and I came in as guitar and backup vocals. And it was a, I mean, it was a fun time. We got to open nice. for Cold, uh, Adelita's Way, like so many different wow. awesome bands. That's really cool. Yeah. What's the biggest show that you've done then as far as the amount of people? I mean – Opening for Cold was great. There's only like maybe four people there when we were playing, but yeah, it was but it's still it was one of those. Getting to yeah. see Scooter Ward and Scooter Ward came and got one of our or one of our records. Like he wow, came up, man. Yeah, it was it was a fun fun thing. That's really cool. Yeah, and then um, you know, COVID hit, and we did uh, we did the the show. Uh, it was a streaming show at the Riff. Yeah, yeah, and um, how was that for you? In the it was so weird. It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because as performers, we we rely on an audience, right? Uh, and when you have to like pretend that there's people there, it's really freaking hard. We had the in ears going, and I swear, like once I for a little bit, I took my one ear out, and I was listening. It just like was dead silence. Yeah, all that we had. You was hear good. it bounce against the back wall almost. It was yeah. so great. Yeah. Um, who did that for you? Oh, uh, the guy who does the lights. Tom. Yes, Tom, Tom Henry. Henry. There we go. Yeah. Very Sorry, cool. Tom. I, I, horrible names. Wherever my camera is. There we go. Yeah. You know. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> um. So after that, it was just really tough because uh, we were going to play Rocklahoma. Rocklahoma got pushed out. Yeah. And then we just lost momentum. Yeah. But uh, the rest of us didn't lose momentum. Jason, Dustin, uh, Nathan, and myself, we wanted to keep going. Yeah. So we we formed Sorex. Okay. Which is zeros backwards, by the way. Ah. Um, and then we started writing some music and it, it turned into this, this thing. And then I got, I got to the point where I just like, all right, I'm going to go produce a song. It's going to be our song. We're going to launch with this. Right. And then over time it morphed, you know, uh, we had some, some things where some people like didn't fit very well with what we're, I was trying to write, what we're trying to write. So people shifted in, shifted out. Um, eventually I, I was like, Hey, I'm going to do the vocals. Right. And that's when I was like, I finally started to get some confidence about myself. I, I mean, I've, I've been a, a, like a cover band vocalist before. Oh, really? Like what kind of cover band? Um, so I had a band called Space Wife. Okay. And we did 90s grunge and alternative 2000s alt rock. Nice. Um, it, was a, it was a fun couple. Uh, like we did maybe five or six shows. Yeah. And um, so the whole story behind that one. I, uh, I was playing guitar at, at a church and uh, one, of my, one of my really good buddies there, uh, Glenn, he's actually a doctor. He's an intensivist at Cox North. He, uh, he approaches me and he says, Jared, I want to play in front of people. I'm like, we play in front of people. Like, no, man, no. I want to play in front of like people. I'm like, all right, really? He's like, yeah, man. I'm like, all right. 
let's do this. So I went and I, I, uh, I caught up with two musicians that I play with in the past. I'm like, this is going to be surefire. We're going to get on stage. We're going to play in front of audience. It's going to be great stuff. We had like three practices and we were ready to go. Wow. And uh, yeah, we played at uh, uh, the place that burnt down. Cartoons. Crave. Crave. Yeah, we played at Crave. We played at Moon City. I swear, um, what having Glenn as like our our Adonis figure because like uh-huh. dude is like six foot four. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Uh, all the nurses came in to watch us. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. and it was like we would we we pack places out. Yeah. Moon City was uh that was our we played the four twenty show there that year and it was a it was a fun time. Wow. And then uh Glenn decided that you know he had his fun and right moved on and yep yeah he got to check that box and then and then next done yeah yeah. So yeah, that's uh that explains the the grunge alt rock thing. Interesting story. You know, and I asked you earlier about like how does the gospel thing tie in? What I'm hearing from you is a lot similar to me, and that it, we're so different from most metal heads that we're not like, oh, if it's not metal, it's crap. Right. There's a lot of that, but there's a lot of good music too uh, that people snooze on, or maybe they don't, and they just don't admit it publicly. But right. I, I I think that that's a thing that at least you're open to different music. Right. Um, besides just metal or besides just gospel or besides just my favorite time in this, the scene, I played a uh, stand-up bass in a postmodern jukebox style jazz band called Margo and the Kidders. Oh, wow. That was a ton of fun. So we're talking about just playing different styles of music. Um, fun story about that one. Uh, so Corey Johnson, the guy who like organized that band together came to me. He, he liked the way I played bass. Well, we played at church together too. And he's like, Hey, do you think he could play a stand-up bass? I'm like, I don't know. I've never tried. Did you like have to rent one then or what? No, I actually, uh, the day before our first, uh, the day of our first show, I found a, uh, an Englehart C1 student base at an antique store in Ozark. Wow. Bought it and played it at our first show. Sure. Um, by the way, the fingering on a stand-up bass is more like a violin than it is like a guitar. So that was fun. But at least with jazz, you can slide into it like on the fretless right. bass. Like, it's right like, yeah you'd be like yeah i meant you to ballpark do that. it and yeah. Then, yeah 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 i totally meant it's to the do same that. on keys like if you accidentally hit a black yeah. note and you just go to a, a white note real yeah. quick you're like, and by, oh, by the end of it I was, I was i was slapping i was having a good, i didn't know what i was doing but it was a great time <laughs> and you look good doing it with a big old a big old upright bass yeah and the, and the cloth yeah uh gotta gotta catch that cloth man uh so we're, we're unfortunately already out of time on this but um two things three things 17 things uh so First of all, would you like to stick around and play some games with us? I would love that. Sweet. Check. Uh, would you like to play some music for us? I will try my hardest to do that. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm excited for this because I think you said without giving too much away uh, that you're going to do a song that you haven't played acoustically on acoustic. Right. Until you asked me if I'd play some music earlier today. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll try it. Okay, let's let's yeah. go. Yeah. So it's going to be the song Ghost that I was talking about. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so let's wrap this up. I'll give you a couple options here. Okay. You can add to my big shiny ball. Uh, we can have an awkward pause, or we can make something out of Play-Doh. Huh. Let's add to the big shiny ball. Oh, what makes you think it's this big shiny ball? Well, I mean, it's big, it's well, shiny, you've been pounding on it all night. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> all right, Jared. Add a jared size amount to uh, my big shiny ball, and... Have your way with it. Uh, well, <laughs> D, all of the above. Help. Nice. Jared Poole, everybody. Good stuff. Appreciate it. Hey, musicians. Do your shows need that extra layer of fun and excitement? Wow your fans with Next Level Production and let Sunset Productions help you up your game. We can create custom and unique sound, lighting, and video packages designed just for you and your budget. Let's work together and give our community the shows they deserve. For more information, contact Jared Isaacs at sunsetproductionsspringfield at gmail.com. You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Sunset Productions. Sunset Productions. Don't be a jukebox. Be an experience.
Classic Rock Coffee. Our coffee rocks. Uh, we're going to keep the show on the road and welcome our second guest. You've seen her out and about. You know her from on the scene. She's been here. She's been there. She's been everywhere. She'd love to come to one of your shows. Let's welcome at this time, Dominique Gabriella. Hot dog, I said it right. Yes. <laughs> My goodness, Second you look time. amazing. Thank you. I mean, you we're do just too. doing a little, a little YouTube show, and look at you getting all dolled up, outdoing me. No, this is how I always dress when I go out. I like it. I like so. it. I, I feel a little grungy today. I, I, wah, yeah. wah, wah. <laughs> hey, I like the grunge look though. Oh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, that was my time. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. So you were you were into the grunge and oh, the yeah. alternative Nirvana rock and stuff, huh? and all that. You know. Nice. Is that Long Garden and yeah. very cool. What what were you like raised on? What what was your go to? Oh my goodness. Okay, so my parents owned a jukebox business. And they had twenty five different jukeboxes, and they would put them out and about. At different venues and so I was raised oh, wow. on a whole variety of music but grunge grunge was something that I was you know that's during my time I was a teenager in the 90s or and that that was my music that's really cool yeah. a jukebox uh, yeah, I, I mean so is that like with vinyl or were they CDs by that CDs point CDs and vinyl wow so we had a, a large selection of music wow so. so did you get to keep some of those as like they filtered through and stuff or uh no not so much no not so much <laughs> i know it's a bummer, it's a bummer. well yes. that's cool so did you help your your family with that business and stuff i and did i mean i was really young but i would go on the runs with my uh dad and just switch out the yeah. music and everything when how cool is that happen. though and I, yeah. I bet that was quite an experience for a young person to go yeah. inside all these bars and yeah. help your dad select what music goes in there and stuff did he teach you about like is there a science to knowing what, what no, records it was or more, what, whatever? Uh, well, kind of. There was requests all the time, and a lot of people um, like country. Yeah, uh, around these here yeah, parts, they yeah. sure do. Yeah, well, this was in Colorado because I'm actually from Colorado. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, it was just requests. Uh, I can't even think of the, the names of a lot of them that were requested. So, um, But, I, I mean, he really liked uh the 70s and the 80s rock yeah. and so i listened to a lot of that when i was growing up um and then my brothers being older than me they listened to a lot of 80s stuff but they were uh since they were older than me they got into the grunge before i did and then showed me that so it was a combination with my parents and my brothers and my sister to show me that's all cool. the music that's yeah. awesome very cool so where at in Colorado are you from? Boulder. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice. Boulder, very Colorado. pretty. It's very pretty, but so very why the heck expensive. Yeah, okay, there you go. I was going to say, <laughs> so why the heck did you move then? Yeah, Yeah, that'll, that'll explain it. Yeah. yeah. So I've been here since I was a young teenager. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So talk to me about your involvement in the local music scene. Like, well, I guess, okay, let me, let me realize that because that's a huge, <laughs> that's a, that's a huge pit to get into. Um, you started promoting shows and stuff, didn't you? Is that yeah. right? Okay, so let's start there. Okay, so I've been in the scene for about 17 years now. Okay. And um, I started off by just dragging people off the street to come see my friend's band. Um, and they were playing at, you know, The Drink. Do you remember The Drink? <laughs> Back wow. in the day, um, which was uh, downtown where the History Museum is now. Oh, okay. Um, and then they would be at the Rockwell or wherever. But mm -hmm. I would... Just bring people off the street and like, hey, you need to see this band because, oh, my God, they're so, so awesome. Um, but my friends really appreciated, you know, me doing the promotion for them. Just well, heck, yeah, you're, you're a good friend to have in, <laughs> in times like that. So I decided that um, I really wanted to do something with that since I, I seem to be OK with it. Right. So I ended up going to school for electronic media productions and then entertainment management and uh became a band manager for several different bands throughout the years and i've worked at a few different clubs in in wow. town as a booking manager yeah so yeah. so your college experience what did that look like what what kind of things were you specifically doing in in in, in school yeah in school, yes in class and <laughs> um well can you with, tell i didn't go <laughs> <laughs> well with electronic media production that's all about the board and you know how to lay out the chords or 
But I did that because I didn't know that there was a music pro or an entertainment management program in the area. I was told there wasn't. And so I started out at OTC, and then I found out about the music program or entertainment program over at MSU and switched over there. And then I found out there was a better one at Full Sail. Right. Yeah, for band yeah. management. Yeah. So I switched to that. Kind of what they're yeah. known for. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I had no idea anything about Full Sail, but yeah, that's Very cool. what I did. Very cool. Was, so like online classes and stuff. Mm, oh the, yeah, with yeah. full sale. Yeah, that would have been nice if I could. I know, just go right? Down. Yeah, it's be not, on the beach. It's not located in a bad spot, exactly. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very cool. So, so that was your hand in, in production and or uh, promotion and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So then let's talk about the evolution to to where you're at now, where like I with am. on the scene and Sammy and how are the two related? So the Springfield area music industry, otherwise known as Sammy, um, is a nonprofit organization that's been around for about five, six years now. Yep. And we are the media department of that. Now, how I even got started in doing this, um, I was asked to be the head of Springfield After Hours. So it was a branch off of After Hours. From I Branson. remember that. Yeah. Um, and during uh, uh, quarantine, um, that business dissolved, not because of other reasons. And I just could not let go of what we were doing for the community. Because you had a passion for yeah. what, what yeah. you were doing and the time yeah. invested. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, my, my team did too. And just seeing all these musicians in town, um, just needing that help. Because yeah. I really believe that uh, it's, it's really hard for musicians to do the business side as well as being creative. Absolutely so. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay for mm -hmm. people to be really good at playing something oh, and yeah. not good at like, how do I get people to show up? Right. Like, it's okay if you're right. not good at that, but go to the people that can help you with that. Yeah, and that's the yeah. whole reason why I started doing it. I mean, I, I love to sing. I taught myself piano, and I went through music classes and, and coaching and stuff like that. But yeah. being on the side of helping the musicians here in town with the business part, I'm also... You know, I felt very passionate about because I really want to help them. I see their talent, and they just don't know the stuff that I do because I went to school for it. So. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There is a science behind things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There really yeah. is. Uh, so is there a reason that you don't play in a band as well? Like, is it just time? Is it just like, uh, uh, why? Well, it's yeah, it's time. Uh, on the scene really takes over my life. I'm really, really, really busy because I have a very small, um team of people who are all volunteers um so it's it's super hard to uh get everybody to be doing things on a regular basis because they have their normal jobs right so yeah no it's it's funny this is like an episode of similarities mm -hmm. like but similarities between names and and between uh passion projects and stuff that yeah same kind of thing like we've got a great crew here that is all volunteer mm -hmm. um we donate way more time than we probably should mm -hmm. uh but it's it's for the love of the game and it's for betterment of what we're investing in in the springfield music community oh yeah so. yeah we have a great great music community yeah. and i didn't even realize the history until i went to school and did a whole um report over Limburgs okay. and just the whole scene of springfield yeah. and um have you seen that documentary called the center of nowhere i think it's called Boy, that sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. It's all about the uh, music scene here. In wow, really? Yeah. So Where can I, people find that? I think it's on YouTube. It was on okay. Amazon for a while. And uh, with Queen City Shout, uh -huh. uh, that happened just a few months ago, um, the director was here. Um, oh. And they uh, did a commentary about the uh, film as well. And the director told me that eventually they would like to do a follow-up video because I think that was remember when that came out but um it's been quite a few years so it's changed quite a bit since that last yeah one. we have grown so much yeah since that last well one. and a lot's changed since you know post pandemic yeah. Oh, yeah. and lockdown and yep. all that too yeah exactly like, like jared and i were talking about like even the way that people approach doing shows and stuff have changed mm -hmm. uh we had to get used to playing to nobody literally and filming it and seeing how that went and then it was like at 25% capacity, 50, mm -hmm. and then slowly we're getting back, but it's like something is still different. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's, um, I, I, I'm curious to ask this, and I don't know how to approach this, but I feel like other people may not know how to approach this either. Mm -hmm. So how, what, why, when? Your arm. 
Oh, my arm? Oh. You know. I lost it again. Like, oh, again? I left it. I left again? it. I left it somewhere. I knew. Fuck. I knew we left something. Crap. I knew we left something somewhere. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, it happens no, all the yeah. time. It just falls off, and I just don't realize it. <laughs> just keep picking uh, it up, putting it back yeah. on again. Yeah, no. no honestly, so this was uh, how long ago? Uh, 21 years ago. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was yeah. an accident, correct? Uh, yes, a car wreck. Right. Yes, yes. So, uh, unfortunately, it, um, I... It's unfortunate, but fortunate, you know, because this was it's, my... Uh, I always look at that kind of thing as a yeah. blessing in disguise. It is. It yeah. is. It was my dominant arm. Um, oh, wow. And uh, obviously, I'm forced to to learn how to do my left arm. And um, I think you got a message. I, well, I may have. I don't know. So, <laughs> so you had a dominant arm, but now yeah. you've got a dominant arm, right? Yeah, a dominant oh. arm. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. There you go. There so, you go. Yeah, I, got, I lost in the car wreck. Um, I had a seven percent chance of living. Oh my gosh! And what had, I mean, what happened? Uh, I it I had a horrible ex boyfriend that did not like what was going on, and so he ended up running right into a rock wall on, on purpose. Yeah, on purpose. Holy cow! So man. the reason why I survived though is because my seat belt was on and I was asleep. So my body was relaxed. Wow. Yeah. So my my arm was between the door and the seat, and and you're in the passenger yeah, seat, I assume. Yeah. 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 And um, but yeah, I was in a wheelchair. Well, I had near death experience. I was in a coma, yeah, oh for my several gosh. months. And then um, I was in a wheelchair for several months, and then I was basically a special person drilling on myself. And oh my yeah, gosh. it's so I also was an introvert before. Uh, so you really Obviously. had to push yourself, right? Obviously, yeah. I am no longer. Right. No longer. Well, There's good for you out on that. There yeah, no, good I'm for not. you on that for pushing yourself to do that because I could, you could have easily went even more introverted and gotten to oh, a really yeah. dark spot. Yeah, so I good feel for you. like you could do it. Uh, things could happen either one way or the other. You could either use it to your ability to become uh, yes. a more standout person. Or you just could. I think it's recluse. a choice. I yeah. think it's a personal choice yeah. that takes this long. Like, yeah, yeah this sucks, but there's yeah. way more out yeah. there. There's a reason I survived. But I yeah. also feel like it's helped me and helped other people throughout the years, too, because I've met some amazing people just because I have one arm. Um, yeah. I have a friend that I call my right hand man because he's also lost an arm. Yeah. And I'm his left hand lady. So oh, we'll, buy, we'll buy each other gloves or um, get each other stuff for our nubs to decorate yeah. and stuff. But, uh, that's too cool. Yeah. That's too cool. But I got my uh, tattoo um, in 2019. Okay, so this was yeah. after the accident oh, yeah. then. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, no, they just folded over this. Well, just I don't, perfect. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got this done 2019, very first tattoo ever. Uh, That's awesome. So yeah, yeah. with anything, if I just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that attitude. I really do. Um, so, and I wanted to bring that up. Mm -hmm. Like you and I have talked about yeah. this, so I know. But I feel like maybe some people don't know how to approach that or anything. Is there anything? In, that you would want people to know that you're like, I gotta do is ask, or all you gotta do is say this, or yeah, yes, I'm I can do this. I'm a very easygoing or... person, and I really don't right. get offended that much. Yeah. There's a lot of times that I make fun of my arm. I, I really do like to make fun of the situation. That's something I've learned about myself too. Yeah. If I'm the first one to 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 you know rib yeah. myself, yeah. then we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you gotta but, have a sense of humor. Yeah, for college, uh, the first day of college, I did make my shirt uh, shirt for myself that said, "I once had a pet alligator." But you could see how that worked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did that because I want people to know that they could approach me. Right. I'm okay. That's you know? so cool. So, That's so yeah, cool. I do that kind of stuff or I'll tell people um, that I lost it in uh, you know, some type of a a re a accident as in wrestling an alligator right. or. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of course. Going Arm surfing. wrestling contest that went yes. wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Have to make you know make light of it. You, you well, and that's the thing. Like you just have to maintain a sense of humor. Otherwise, what's the point? Oh, you yeah. know, of any of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm really fortunate to have people come up to me just to tell me that um, it's helped them. You know, just seeing me act like a normal a normal person. Right. Okay, well, it's just a limp. <laughs> so, exactly. That's but exactly right. I did right. learn how to do kickboxing and quad manga uh, for like a year and a half. Uh, it's been several years, but I did wow. that. Because I'm a small person and need to protect myself. Sure. Having one arm. But I've given somebody a black eye with my nub. No kidding. Yeah. Well, yeah. be warned, y'all. <laughs> be warned. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, before we wrap this up, 
on the scene. Yes. Let's make it official. The newest sponsor of the Audio Roast. And the Audio Roast, the newest sponsor yeah. of On the Scene. Yes, yes, yes. Good yes. stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm super excited to get to work with you and do this. You and I had a sit down chat and something that's important to me is a lot of people come to me because uh, of this and they're like, oh, Jared, music scene mm -hmm. or Jared from the Riff music scene. And it's like, there's so much out there. No one person can know it all, but you mm -hmm. do, you know, way, I mean, you're a great source to, for people like, you know, I feel like going out tonight. What, who's going on? Who's where? And like, where can I go? All I got to do is go to on the scene, 417. Um, there you go. Yes, and, and we make a list of everything that's going on every single day of the week. It takes me two to three days to put it together. Right. Well, yeah. and <laughs> the other thing that I appreciate is that you do more than just music. You do like yeah. arts festivals and uh, just anything I mean, in the entertain entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm super excited to try and get some of our audience and and take that traffic to your website as well, mm -hmm. so that people can have. Okay, we know if we want to go out, we don't know where on the scene. Yeah, like, and not only that, if they look on my list, they will see On the Scene Live or OTS Live. That means uh, myself or some of my team will be there at the event doing recordings of uh, and doing interviews with the bands and stuff like that. So very cool. They could actually be part of it as well if they just say, hey, I saw you on online and yeah. so wanted to check On yeah. the Scene out and this band. So Right, because you do a lot of on <laughs> on the scene yeah. coverage yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you're smart uh but like live as they're there about to take stage or right. in between a set or that kind mm -hmm. of thing uh, which i think is really cool because it gives people like that one last chance hey we're doing it right now yeah. get off your couch and let's go yeah. yeah and not only that um there's another thing that we do it's a segment called behind the scenes so it's kind of like what you're doing but a, a lot different you know we get mm -hmm. more in depth uh about the musician or the entertainer and get to know them. Yeah. And um, then they give advice uh, for up and coming uh, performers. And then we talk about the music industry in general. And so, yeah, so you can find that on my YouTube. Very cool. Well, I'm going to turn the script on you then yeah. before we head out. Yeah. Give, give some band out there some advice from things that you've seen, things that you've learned in college and that kind of stuff. Like okay. something that bands do and you're like, God, why? Okay, I have two things. Okay. I mean, there's a lot, but I'll get I'll narrow it down to two. I've got ten, so if you've got two, you're <laughs> doing good. I will narrow it down to two. Okay, one thing is when you, which camera should I look at? Uh, four. Four. Okay, when you name your band, please name your band something that people are going to remember how to spell. So if you spell it a weird way, they're not going to find it. They're not. <laughs> it just will not work that way. Um, another thing is, is when you are trying to promote your shows, make sure that you co-host the uh, venue that you're going to be playing at and contact that venue, letting them know that you are uh, made them co-host because otherwise it will not show up on their page. And when I'm looking to find uh, the events that are going on out and about, it's not going to show up. Well, because you're yeah. going to the venue pages. You're not yeah. like going like through 600 bands and all these. Well, if I, cause I know basically almost everybody in town, I will see their posts. Sure. Individual posts. Sure. But if for some reason, say, uh, somebody doesn't know about on the scene, they're mm -hmm. going to go to that venue exactly. and look at the events and it's not going to pop up there. Yeah. So they yeah. have no idea. No, so those are advice. two things. Yeah, <laughs> two no, things. Solid. Uh, out of many, many, many that I can say. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And we'll save some of those because yeah. maybe we uh, yeah. we could do stuff in the future with that, uh -huh. like little tips and stuff that we can sprinkle throughout. Right. But yeah, I'm super, super excited to get to work with you and on the scene. Um, Likewise. And, and, and see what we can come up with and what we can do together to help the local scene. So yeah. good stuff. Um, okay, I'm hoping you'll stick around and play some games, though. Absolutely. Because I, I know that games. you guys do some things that are kind of similar, but I bet games aren't one of them. So that's nope. where we're going to. Okay. Nope. Uh, so you we'll do that. More fun, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Well, so, yeah, it can be. It can, it can be. also be really stressful, from what I've heard. Uh, so yeah. uh, before we wrap things up, would you like to add to my big shiny ball? Would you like an awkward pause, or would you like to go two out of three Rochambeau? I think most people don't even know what that is. Yeah, I don't. What is with no, that? Paper scissors. Oh, okay. Let's rock. Let's do that. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let me move all this out of the way here. Do, 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 do. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm.
Ja, ja. Ja. Wow. Ja. Oh. Okay, so we're, we're, yep, exactly. Okay. Dang. <laughs> How's that, man? We split the difference. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to have to take it over to the game center and see how okay. your score finally, you know, flushes out throughout the end of the night. Awesome. Uh, everybody, Dominique, Gabriel, Gab, Gabriel, 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 Gabriella. Yeah. Ron Preston here. I'm Nikki. And we are here on the scene at Mother's Brewing Company at Area 71, the Outland Ballroom at Odyssey Lounge. You know what time it is, but you know what time it is. You know what time it is. It is time for us to let you know what our top picks are for this upcoming weekend and week. So let's get to it. So let's get to it. So let's get to it. <laughs> We've made it back over here to the Game Center, and we're going to play this. Yes, the song in reverse. All right, so Grunge 1992 is what's on today's docket. We've got Jared and Dominique, and we're going to play some Guess That Song in Reverse. So the way this is going to work, guys and gals, is we're going to play 30 seconds of a Grunge song from 1992 backwards for 30 seconds. The first person that can buzz in with the name of that song and the artist that did the song will get a point for each. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's go ahead and start our first song. Jared. Alice in Chain, then Bones. Them Bones. Uh, is that your final answer? Yeah. You sure? Uh-huh. Mm. Okay. Uh, what, what do you think? think? Nah, I don't know. It was there. It was there. I just had to hear a little more, but I, I can't. But you had to go buzzing in I and stuff, playing a game. I know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see if that is indeed a correct answer. <laughs> them oh, bones. Nice. There you bones. go. That's the one. All right. Two points for Jared. Uh, let's check out our next song. Oh, crap. Oh, shit. All right, Dominique. Okay. Oh, it was right there. This is not my stuff. Oh, man. Shoot. I lost it. I lost it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, you, you, you could, do you have an artist? No. Okay. All right, Jared. Chance <laughs> so to Temple Pilots. Uh, love type thing, I think is the name of the song. Love type thing? I think. That's your... I'm going to go with that because that's all that's in my head. I know how the song goes. All right. Well, let's hear it. I know it eats you up inside. I know you know you know you. Yeah. 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 That Seems legit. Yeah. That Seems legit. Uh, let's see if it's the correct answer. Eh, close enough. Sex type thing. Sex type oh, thing. Sex. Well, it's, it's, yeah, you know, you got to you gotta make it somehow. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll give another two points to Jared on that one. Uh, let's uh, check out our next song. Radiohead creep. Oh, you already showed it to me. No. Oh, I was gonna say it. You did say it. Good oh. job. Two points for Jared. Who's behind the curtain over there? I don't know, but Oz is getting awful trigger happy back there. <laughs> Oz, have you been hitting the sauce? It's jumping on me. Oh, well then let's uh pause for the cause. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Probably so. There you go. Uh I don't know. Sorry. To be fair, is Radiohead really like yeah. grunge? Yeah. Uh, oh wait. Oh, I see what happened. 
Yeah, yeah they had yeah. their, they had, like, I, so I had yep. planned to bring this whole, like, uh, Charlie Day crazy, like, um, what is grunge yeah. board, but after, I decided not to. Yeah. Uh, just on, you know, I had thoughts that were like, oh man, that, that's actually not a okay. good idea. But, yeah, like, defining grunge is hard. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee's like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out what our next song is. I know this. I know this. Stone Temple Pilots Creep. Creep. All right. So, Creep and then Creep. Wait, wait. No, not Creep. Um, Stone Temple Pilots. Oh. No, no, it's not Creep. It's Big. <laughs> Fa la 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 la. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's Stone Pilots, and it's not Creep, but I'm gonna say Creep, whatever. Okay. Is that your final answer? It shouldn't be. Big Empty, I think is the name of the song. But oh. you're going with Creep. Big Empty, go. Okay. I agree that it is Stone Temple Pilots, but I don't remember the name Take of the song. time with a wounded hand, cause he likes to heal. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's check out what the answer is. Should have stuck with it. Oh. I psyched you out of it. Ah. <laughs> One point for Jared and a point for Jared. All right, uh, moving right along to our next song. Oh. Jared. R.E.M. Everyone hurts. Yes. Or everybody hurts. Everybody hurts. Oh, Sometimes. Sometimes. All right. Uh, is that is that right? Yeah. Is yeah. I saw the look on your face. You're like, it's right there. Yeah. yeah. Just need like half a second. Yeah. All right. See what the answer is. Everybody hurts. I'm gonna have to throw a flag on this one. Oh, REM is not grunge. Oh, the other one wasn't either. Neither, neither was uh, Radiohead. Radiohead's yeah. not grunge. Yeah. Okay, so if you know, you know. Okay. You know what I'm saying. You know what some, I'm saying. Is there Hootie some, who? Is there right. Hootie in this too? Uh, quit giving my answers away, Joshua. Uh, let's uh, check out our next song. Yeah. Oh, yes. Woo! 30 seconds are up. Yeah. Any answers? Jim Blossom say jealousy. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a guess. I, I hear that too, the hey jealousy. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think it's hey jealousy as well. All right. I don't. So I gotta ask is Jim Blossom say jealousy. Yeah, uh, let's see it. Oh my god! Of course god. it is. Of course it is. All right, good stuff. We've got uh, one more. One more. Check it out. Come on, Dominic. I could do this. Oh, oh that was close. <laughs> but Jared buzzed in quicker. <laughs> and change the rooster. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, 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 yep. Good yep. stuff, good stuff. Let's uh, make it official and see if that is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Um, man, that was, uh, that was good stuff, man. I'm warming up. Let's take a quick break, tally some points, come back, play another game. Join us, won't you? Classic rock coffee. It's coffee that rocks, yeah. This ain't your typical coffee shop. It's Java with attitude, baby. From the moment you step onto the stage, you'll see, hear, and taste the difference. We're rocking and roasting seven days a week with guitars, amps, lights, burning wrists, and groupies. We've got the best coffee, frappe, smoothies, protein shakes, pastries, and sandwiches. Oh, yeah, green M&Ms if you get backstage. Come on in and get a whole lot of love. Get the idea, my babies. Even if you don't love classic rock. Well, that's impossible. You're gonna love classic rock coffee. Check us out. Located at Kansas Expressway and Sunset. Hey, we're back. Where's my Skinner Leonard fans, huh? Leonard Skinner, you betcha. Who else is in the box? Creedence Clearwater Revival. I need you to come down to Marshfield, Missouri. That's 1100 Spur Drive, Marshfield, Missouri, Suite 120. Rewind Records has blown up. We're growing, oh, we're growing. 
All you need to do is keep listening to good music. Why doesn't this fella have a shirt on? It's because it's Jim. Jim can do what he wants. Uh-huh. Some Jim Moore. A little 311. Talk to me, Nick, Chad, Tim. The originals, the original outlaws. Yeah, Jamie Johnson's cool, but Willie, Merle, these are the kind of records that we're carrying up at Rewind. We carry used records, some new records, and now CDs, DVDs, incense, candles, all the stuff you need to just make your record room cool. All you need to do is keep listening to good music. back and I see you, you did too. All right, so we've got one more game that we're going to play on today's show before we wrap things up. Uh, let's check out what we're doing. First line of the song. Good thing you don't have to sing this one, right? You just got to know the words. Uh, so the way this is going to work is we're going to give you the first line of the song and you have to tell us the name of the song and the name of the artist. Today, I'm choosing to do something even fancier than that though. So stay, I'm not going to say how you earn extra credit, but I'm going to allow some extra credit today. Uh, this is one of the hardest games that we play. So Josh is going to tell you about our lifeline system. So you can choose from sing the first line, which Jared will sing for you. Okay. Read the second line, artist initials, ask the audience or peek at the producer. All right, so those are your... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. <laughs> so those are your options. Uh, yeah, you know. All right, so let's just start things off with our first song, shall we? Know Me Broken by My Master. Jared. It's Alice in Chains, and I'm pretty sure it's wood. Okay. Yeah, your name. No? no? All right. Uh, let's see if that is a correct answer. Johnny says, wood, Alice yeah. in Chains. All right, so here's how today's extra credit is going to go. Uh -oh. Can you give us the next line of the song? No, me broken by my master. Something none thereafter. I don't know the other part of it. Pretty close. Since it's extra credit, I'm going to be extra critical and say no. <laughs> Teach the of child love thereafter. Teach the of child love thereafter. Okay. That's all right. You still got uh, two points for that one. Uh, let's check out our next one. I hate the rain and sunny weather. Would you like him to sing? <laughs> I mean, we could we could call it in. Sing it for us. Yeah. Hey Josh, you want to sing him a song? Nope. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know this dang song. Uh, crap. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just uh give you. Uh, we'll ask the audience. Adios. Insert crickets. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, smart move, Brian. Keep yours down there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll try uh, some artist initials. U K J. Uh, this is the head exploding moment. I have no idea. But as soon as he says it, we're just both going to be very disappointed in ourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm going to manifest the picture that I saw in the audience and just go, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Pretty accurate representation, I'd say. Um, what's that? I don't know. Is it Metallica drummer? Metallica drummer? Lars? Yeah, it's uh, UKJ. Lars Ulrich. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You were 
Th this close. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, see what the final answer was. Uh, everything about you. Everything about you. Bam, bam. Yeah, same. <laughs> exactly the same. Exactly the same. All right, uh, let's keep it moving. Maybe I don't know all I like I know. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I feel that time's a waste and go. Jared. Stone Temple Pilots plush. Plush by Stone oh, Temple Pilots. Is that your final answer? Yes. All right. Uh, what do you think? Yay or nay? I think that is what it is. Yeah? Yeah. You sure? Not really. I'm trying to hear it in my head yeah. and... And I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. All right. All right, audience, yay or nay? Yay? All right, let's uh, finalize this, see what the answer is. Wash, Stone yeah, Temple Pilots. Yeah. Another two points for Jared. Uh, let's hit it with another one. All I can say is that my life is pretty plain. Dominique? Okay. Oh, man. Oh, I know this. Oh my god, why can it not come to my head? Uh, it is... Oh, dude. Just like math class in middle school, show your work. Yeah, um... I like my point of view. God damn it! Oh my goodness! What? I know the damn... I know the band, I know the song, and I can't think of it. Uh... Yeah, yeah, audience member. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. She asked for an audience member. Yes. Yeah. Blind Melon. Woo! And lost too soon in 1995. Yeah. Uh, and all I could say uh, is that that would be Blind Melon and. <laughs> oh, what? God dang it! I know this. Oh, I can't remember the name of the song. Uh, Green. Uh. uh... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rain. Um. Um. <laughs> Okay, what is it? <laughs> no rain. No rain. Okay. Hey. Yes, All but, right. I know, the, I know the song lyrics, but yeah. Let's see if this is a correct answer. <laughs> no rain by Blind Melon. <laughs> Good teamwork, man. Good teamwork. Uh, you know, if push came to shove and I had to choose, I would say that this is actually probably my favorite '90s song. Oh, it is mine too. It's a good. Yeah. It's, it's a good. good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's uh, try another one, shall we? Can you see like a child? I can. Every day. Wake okay. Up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stone Temple Pilots, Wicked Garden, one of my favorite songs of performance. Cover. Why so many Stone oh, man. Temple Pilot songs? I'm guessing they had an album come out in 92. No. <laughs> Something about <Yeah>. that. <laughs> can you see like a child? Yep. That's the one, I think. That's the nice. one. Two points. That's some good stuff, huh? This is going to make for a great playlist, I have a feeling. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we've got a couple more. Bury me softly in this womb. The Fugees. Is that your... Bury me softly in this womb. But that's Bury not me softly. <laughs> one tomb. One tomb. It's a grunge, though. I mean, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're on the same Jared wavelength yeah. on that. Yeah, that's not grunge, though. There. I actually have no idea. Now's your chance. Yeah, I know. Oh, God, I know. Um, hmm. No, no. I'm not too good at these. <laughs> but I do know that wasn't grunge. His answer. No, no, yeah, for real. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't real at all. <laughs> Would you like to peek at a producer? Yes. Can we see you? I hope he's got pants. <laughs> I hope he doesn't. Wait one second, let me get the right camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the bottom one. Oh, what oh, happened oh. to my camera? Oh, wow. Uh, Woo! <laughs> That's your feet. Look at the pants. <laughs> okay, so can you give us some sign language as a hint? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> flip you right back off. <laughs> All right, that's what you get when you peek at the producer. You just never know in this crazy world. 
Wow. All right. Um, nothing. I have no earthly idea. Metallica won. Have any more players that we can do? I think I think we. You can, you, can, yeah. you can ask for the next line. Yeah. Ask for the next line. Let, let's All right. Next line. All right. Uh, I give this part of me to you. Oh. I know. Um. Thousand chains. Oh my gosh. And then it's blank. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. I, I, I did a melody. I did a melody. Oh, that, would, that should have been. Like, we've already got wood. We need could, can't, would, uh, wouldn't. What? Why? When? I don't know. I'm okay. gonna say why. I can't remember the name of the song, but yeah, like Alice in Chains, and maybe Hunger Games. Why? I don't. I don't think it is, but yeah. Yay, nay. I, I say yay with. Oh. Alice in Chains. But I don't know the name of the song because I hear the tune in my head. Uh, two, one. Eh. It's not why. All right. It's not. All right, yeah. Johnny. Don't Whoa. go all the way yet. Down in a hole, yeah, and we on. all know it back. Come on now. Yeah. Oof, so good. So good. Uh, one point to Jared. Another point to Jared. I couldn't. Um, <laughs> Jared's are winning. I, I think I have an unfair advantage because there needs to be another dominate. Yeah. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. We are kind of. <laughs> we're, we're a dominant force. We, we are. <laughs> we... <laughs> all right. So here's what we'll do we'll give you one more chance okay. to, to keep. Put more points on the board yeah, with this last one. A point. <laughs> Mop the hoople in the game of life. That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I have no idea on that one. I, I don't Pearl know. Jam little yellow lead better. It's not that, but yeah, whatever. I mean, if I had to guess, it'd be a Pearl Jam song just because you can. Mop the hoople in the yeah. game of life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's All not right. that though. So is that your final answer? Yeah. Sure. That's all I got. I all have right. nothing to give you. Oh, come on. This is your last chance, <laughs> I man. No, see. I no? Just, no? No, no. All right. I'm going to song, be gracious as a host and give you the next line of the song mm -hmm. for free. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Andy Kaufman in the wrestling match. And to come in the wrestling match <laughs> on a CNN. Kyle Driver and a power bomb. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. All right, well. You might want to peek at the producer. I know this one. Oh. Okay. Or, does he? or does he? Or does he? Or does he? I? He's famous right. for. Sure. You want to peek at the producer? Sure. Mm -hmm. God, I'm nervous. R.E.M. <laughs> man in the Moon. Do you believe him? I'm sticking with yellow leather what? because it just makes sense to me. Okay, and what was the other line that you just said? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Andy Kaufman in the wrestling match. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Man on the moon. Yep. Man on the moon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's a correct answer. Man on the moon. Are you? If you believe they got a man on the moon. That's the one. Man all right. On the moon. So we are going to tally up all the points and we'll be back to declare a winner right after this. <laughs> this week's artist spotlight, Jared Poole. We are here with Mr. Jared Poole. Uh, Jared, looks like you're going to be uh, playing a xylophone today. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm happy to do it. Thank you there for bringing you me on. Yeah. No, so you're playing guitar, and it sounds like something that you haven't done acoustically before. No, actually, uh, this song is very like poppy, lots of synth. Um, and when you said, "Hey, uh, do you think you have a song you can play?" I'm like, "Well, I could try to play this on acoustic." There and you go. Uh, yeah, I've been practicing for a couple hours. 
Nice. So is this one of yours or is this a cover? What are we Yeah, doing? this is one of my own songs. It's called Ghost. Um, I'm not really sure what it's about. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Let's see if one plus one equals two, shall we? Okay. All right. Jared Poole. Whispering the words that give me breath From across expanse You're in my head A lesson to be learned from your ignorance A great expense Don't wake the dead I reach out, touch your face and come to life It's just so cruel You can't see me right in front of you And I will be your ghost Your mistake I just want to be what keeps you close No escape I will take you over a parasitic pet I fantasize of being alive by your side obsessed with the thought of losing control I'm just a fool thinking you could feel me I'll keep you safe from the fears inside just promise me that I will be your Ghost, your mistake. I just want to be what keeps you close. No escape. I will take you over. Take you oh 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 over. Oh 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 over. Oh oh oh. oh, oh. We've got some totals here for you. Uh, first of all, before we get to the nitty gritty of all the numbers and stuff, they kind of don't matter. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time. I certainly had yes, a good time having so you both on here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've had a great time getting to know both of you, and hopefully you guys have done the same. So now we've got to divulge the winner. So Domini Dominique, you had two points. That's, uh, that's exactly the same score that I had. So good for us. <laughs> Yay, uh, us. But our landslide winner was Jared. <laughs> Clap for me because I can't. There you go. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm way too old for this now. Uh, Same. All right. So, uh, Jared, if people wanted to check out some music of yours or follow you or anything like that until you, you know, go through another delete phase. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. If you've been a victim. Uh, John Bushmill might be able to have a case for you, just saying. Um, where can people find some of your stuff? So, uh, my current band is Envoy. You can find us on Facebook. We have music up on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, all over the place. The song is called Dreaming. Uh, it was released last year in May. Uh, we are working a couple of more songs, as we talked about before, and I've got a new song that I'm releasing called Ghost, uh, that I'll be in the studio next week. Um, just based on the title of the song, I think I'm going to try it around Halloween time. Spooky oh, cool. Season. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. Do, do we get any kind of first dib insight on what it's actually about and stuff? Huh, no. Okay, no, perfect. No. It's perfect. a secret. And then also, um, I've done some things uh, with Airhead Pride where we've done some covers of like ACDC, but like Chiefs related. So, oh, uh, look really? Up, she makes my Patrick Sexy on YouTube. You'll hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Jared, thank you so much for your time and for coming out. Thank you, Jared. And doing this little shindig of ours. Um, all right, so I'm super excited for this. Where can mm -hmm. people see you next? Where can people. 
find more of what you are into with on the scene? Well, people could find us on on the scene417.com, on our Instagram, on our Facebook, and almost all the social media platforms, but those are the the main ones and YouTube. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you guys do a weekly list uh during the week, like, mm -hmm. here's where I think you should go this weekend, that yeah, kind of thing. It goes from Friday to the following Thursday, and we usually put it out on Thursday evenings, okay. Friday mornings. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And then, obviously, your personal page as well, right? Yes, there yes, you and um, you could find it on uh, the Sammy one, too. So. Oh, nice. Springfield Area Music Industry. You can't escape it. Mm -hmm. Just go search it's for it everywhere. one time. We're yeah. on the scene Just look. all the time. That's yes. right. We're and on the, the scene. next uh, place we're going, oh, I can't even remember my calendar. But some of the big things that are coming up right now is uh, the opening of our studio slash my new club, private event club, called The View Private Event Center. Congratulations uh, yeah. on that, by the way. That's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Um, so that's right above... Hearts of Fire. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. if you're familiar, then yeah, so, you know that it's a good space. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to be opening in about a month, month and a half. Nice. Um, and we have uh, Bash in the Grass that is coming up in September. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. So, uh, but if you want to find out where we are next, just go and look at that list, and it says OTS Live, and then just come join us. There you go. On the scene. New sponsorship. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget the times are hard for everybody out there, so may your cup of coffee, your love of music be strong, but your sense of humor even stronger. We'll see you right here next week at 5 o'clock. <laughs>